everyone welcome back to my channel 5 minute economics where i teach economic concepts in a span of just 5 minutes the topic for today is law of returns to scale which is studied at the school level at undergrad level as well as for preparation of competitive examinations so in this particular video i'll be talking about the increasing returns to scale the constant returns to scale as well as the diminishing returns to scale so yeah let's get started also guys there is a video on the law which is studied parallelly along with law of returns to scale which is law of uh, variable proportion i'll attach the link in the description below so you can check that law as well so we'll start with today's video and also don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel and don't forget to follow me on instagram at 5 minute economics for some fun content so firstly guys let me explain to you what exactly is the law of returns to scale basically law of returns to scale shows the proportional change in the output due to the change in the input which basically in plain and simple words mean that when we change our inputs how much does our output change for example in a factory we have 10 labor who are producing you know maybe x amount of output and if we increase the number of labor to maybe 20 what is the change in that x amount of output which we were producing is it increasing decreasing what is happening to that so when we study the change in the outputs because of the change in inputs that is known as the law of returns to scale of course the degree of change might vary you know it might not be the same for everything we might see a decreasing constant that all we will be studying in the video further but the degree varies accordingly this is a long run law guys so mind you in the long run we know all factors be it fixed factors be it variable factors all are variable nothing is fixed in the long run everything can be changed and we are going to study the three types of law of returns to scale the increasing constant and diminishing further in detail now so firstly guys moving ahead to our first type of returns which is increasing returns to scale the term increasing clearly shows that our output the increase in output is more than the proportional increase in input and that is what it states proportional change in output is more than the proportional change in input for example guys we have one labor and one capital okay and we tend to double it you know now we make it to two labor and two capital okay now we see our initially our output was 10 units but after doubling the labor and capital our output is doubled by not the same amount like we thought maybe 10 say up 20 hoga but now it's reached to 25 this is the case of increasing returns when increasing the inputs by you know the percentage the total percentage of what our output increases is much more in this case it is 150% we thought maybe it will be double or it can be lower also but in this case when the output is more than the input it is a case or situation of increasing returns to scale we can learn this even with the help of a diagram we have on the x axis units of labor and capital whereas on the y axis we have returns clearly we see guys when there are labor units you know we increase it from l to l dash our returns increase is by much more more proportion from r to r dash and that is why giving us this upward sloping returns curve so this increase is much more than this increase and that's why we get such a curve in shape so why does this happen guys this happens due to several reasons number one being technical and managerial indivisibility so i'll give you an example a very simple example uh, we have an oven and we want to make one cake in it okay so oven we have to use the whole oven up ek cake banana hai ya char cake banane hai probably it's a big oven we can use like we can make four cakes simultaneously but even if we have only one order we have to use the whole oven right but what are they saying that when we increase the raw materials the inputs maybe when we are using four cakes uh, you know to make four cakes that oven then then we are using it better right we are because of technical uh, indivisibility in initially we couldn't use like half of the oven we had to use that full oven for those 45 minutes when we bake the cake so then when we are utilizing it's better then we are getting increasing returns to scale also managerial indivisibility ab insaan ko we cannot divide okay so he has to do a job maybe he has five people to supervise that person is very educated very experienced now he can supervise 20 people under him Okay so now if he is only supervising 5 people we increase those people that labor who means supervising 20 people we see our output tends to you know increase more than double by an increasing proportional rate because that man is capable but initially because of indivisibility we couldn't use half the man we had to use his services and now we are getting more returns so i hope you are clear with this concept secondly specialization of course we know when a person does 
same thing again and again and again he gets better at it perfect at it and specialization definitely leads to increasing returns to scale also there is a concept known as concept of dimensions i'll give you an example then only you can understand it for example the room's length is 15 and breadth is 10 okay by the formula of l into b we can calculate the area of the room to be 150 supposingly we increase the length to you know 30 we double the length we double the breadth also to 20 now we might see because we've doubled the length and breadth we might think our area will increase from 150 to 300 but you see the area has increased from 150 to 600 why because of the concept of dimension we see the increase in the output is more than the increase in the input and this is all what you need to know about the increasing returns to scale so guys, our next type of law of returns to scale is the constant returns to scale. And I think the name says it all and by now you must have guessed what will happen under this condition. We know that when the change in output is equally proportionate to the change in input, it is known as law of constant returns to scale. When does it happen? It happens, let's just take the previous example which we took now. Uh, when our labor and capital were one and we increased it to two respectively, you know, one capital, one labor to two capital and two labor, we saw our increase was now is from 10 to 20. Our output has exactly doubled just like how our input doubled. So this is a 100% change. There we saw 150% change when our output was from 10 to 25. But in such a situation, under constant returns to scale, we see that it exactly, you know, how much we increase the input. Similarly, our output also increases by that much amount. So this happens when the internal and external economies are equal to the internal and external diseconomies. I can very well in future come up with a video on this. For now, I'll attach a link where you can read about internal economies and external economies. So when they are in balance, then this is a situation when constant returns to scale occurs. In this particular situation, we have a homogeneous production function because of which this balance is attained. The production function is homogeneous. A very good example of such a kind of uh, situation is the cop douglas uh, law, uh, linear homogeneous production function. This occurs under the constant returns to scale. Similarly, we can study this with the help of a diagram, guys. We notice again labor and capital on the x-axis, returns on the y-axis. We notice that when labor and capital increase, there is an exact increase in the returns due to which we get such a shape of our curve. This red line returns curve is this. And we see because, you know, the change is exactly the same, we get such a shape. So I hope you are clear with what is law of returns to scale under which we studied constant returns to scale. So now guys, coming to a last part, which is known as the law of diminishing or decreasing returns to scale. If you are smart enough, you already know what's going to happen under such a situation. We know that the change in output is less than the change proportional change in our input in such a situation we see when our labor and capital are doubled you know from 1 1 to 2 2 our output is less than double that is from 10 to 15 rather than 10 to 20 or 25 which was in the earlier stage now we see it's only 10 to 15 increases there this is a situation which occurs when our internal and external economies are less than the internal and dis, uh, external diseconomy so when the diseconomies are more than the economies such a situation of diminishing returns to scale it also occurs due to man managerial inefficiency especially in large scale organizations when they tend to increase the number of inputs you know laborers they are under the uh, perspective ki up to you know the output will increase they will uh, think that but now because there are too many people and too many cooks spoil the broth we know when too many people are working under the same um, you know firm there's more of you know time pass happening chit chat happening inefficiency rather than the output increasing when the labor increase the output has started to fall so this is managerial inefficiency secondly also due to limited natural resources so you know it might happen in a coal firm we might increase the number of plants but we cannot increase the output because of uh, unavailability of coal reserves. So that are the two situations that can lead to diminishing returns to scale. Now we can see this with the help of a diagram. In such a situation, we see that similarly X, Y axis, I've already explained to you guys. We see that the labor has increased by a lot of proportion. You know, you can see this big gap. But our returns have increased by a little gap only and due to which we get such a shape of our returns curve, which is concave in shape. Our increasing return curve was convex in shape. This is concave in shape because of the situation of diminishing returns. So lastly, guys, I have observed that many students often tend to get confused between the law of variable proportions and the law of returns to scale. So here I'm demarcating few major differences between the two laws. Number one, law of variable proportion is a short run law, whereas law of returns to scale is a long run law. 
okay so since it is a short run law it is but obvious that we can have only the variable factors to be changing the fixed factors like land machinery they don't change the inputs like raw materials labor change whereas since this is a long run law it is but obvious everything can be changed land labor capital entrepreneur whatever i mean it's in the long run we can do a whole overhaul of the firm then guys here the three stages are known as increasing diminishing and negative returns whereas here we have increasing diminishing and constant returns that will help you demarcate the two and lastly guys this is also known as, known as law of returns to a factor because we are changing only one single factor keeping all other factors same whereas over here it is known as law of returns to scale scale means you know the whole capacity the whole production so that's why it's known as the ch uh, changing the scale of the firm so you can remember it as law of returns to scale so these are the different differences between the two laws i hope this video was useful for you thank you so much for watching this video and i'll see you in the next video